<laughs> quite often I, I, I tend to use my outdoor voice anyways and I forget when I've got a microphone or not. Um, so uh, this is really a, a, a set of several ortho orthogonal things. One, it is f Fedora, LXC on Fedora with System D. System D in the containers, System D on Fedora itself. And some of the issues are really kind of orth orthogonal. Um, really, the problems with System D exist on every System D distribution. I've heard from the OpenSUSE guys that they're running into similar problems. I've heard this from other people. We ran into problems with uh, the changes that were, came down through, from System D. We've gotten most of them solved, but there's still a few warts in there. De depending upon version, <clears throat> at several different times, they introduced a variety of brokenness. Uh, we got so several of those fixed in uh, 0 0.78. We got some more of them fixed where I actually uh, uh, worked with Surge to get uh, System D running in a container. It turns out there's some magic cookies that we didn't expect that introduced some problems. Basically, because of the use of te dev temp FS, if you don't mount, uh, the magic cookie is mounting a, a temp FS on slash dev in your container. And it's like, uh, that's kind of ugly because now we have to populate it which means we have to configure the population, which means we don't have persistent devices, and it it's causes all kinds of problems. But now, at least, it won't crash your host. It won't crash your X server. It won't do a, a number of random acts of terrorism, thanks to the, the shared DevFS, uh, DevTempFS. <clears throat> so in 0 0.8.0, we got that fixed. Then they broke pivot root. Sometime in the Fedora 17 in that level, they upped the rev of System D in Fedora 17 and LXE promptly face planted with pivot root errors all over the place. Okay, well, we got that fixed. Now that's in 0 0.9.0. But we're still stuck with a problem of having to manually set LXE auto dev to tell LXE to, okay, mount this RAMFS on there and populate it. So right now, most of the problem, like we can get auto uh, system D working in containers for most cases. Now, I've tested back through uh, Fedora 15. Fedora 15, you can sort of browbeat into working in a container. Fedora 16, because of the sub subsuming of UDEV into system D, was very broken in a container. And I never got Fedora 16 to, go, to run. 17 and above, we're okay. And we can get it in, running in a container and we can have system D on the host itself. So the status of system D, if you're running 0 0.9.0, we can get it going. We've got a few limitations and we've got a few other things we need to address. Uh, one, we need to clean up the mount points <laughs> in the container, container yet. Remember, you do DF and you see all the, all the ugly stuff? Yeah, we, we gotta revisit that here before too long. Um, we really need to do something about persistent devices because right now in a non-system D container, if you create some extra devices in your slash dev directory and you shut the container down and you bring it back, fine, you got your devices because it's on a persistent file system. You ain't got that with tempfs. So we've we got a problem there. Uh, somehow we've got to have persistent devices and we also need to address this thing with dynamic devices where things come and go, and I've got a real good use case for plugging in USB devices, specifically serial devices, where I'm using serial consoles that are coming into a MUX and going into a USB sharing device, and I've got four servers that can independently request the serial consoles so they can control each other, and I want to be able to shift these off to a container that I can give to an administrator for his particular server and say, okay, connect to this container, request the share from the sharing device to get the serial port. Now you've got the serial port in your container. So yeah, I don't know if namespaces, device namespaces is gonna help that or not, but it's something we need. No? <laughs> This is, and, and this, is, this is a serious use case I've got right now 
in running my uh, running a remote colo site is my servers are controlled through serial devices I don't want to give a, a, uh, a, a single container or the root device access to the root device to a whole bunch of other users Yep. Okay, so you can't make them persistent, right? Well, oh, okay, I, that's two separate things. No, 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 no they're, they're <clears throat> yeah. tied, because you can't have it both ways. Um, I can remove any device in your system, including your memory, including your CPU, right. add it, dynamic, remove it. You have to rely on ex external attributes besides the device name. I, agreed, so agreed. So use those. They're created for you. Use those sim links, but you've got to use external attributes. You can't look at the kernel name. We could rename the kernel names to be all digits. I, I, I absolutely agree with that. Uh, but we do also have the problem that right now, uh, because of the way this is handled, until we get it where we can actually get the di device directory in the container automatically configured, we're having to figure out some way of populating that dev directory thanks to the way system D behaves. It's it's not even system D here. I'm well, using system D, it could be something else. It's yeah, system D is agreed. not at the picture here. Because you've got dev tempfs, which the kernel populates. You can mount it in different places. You can create your own sim links. You can create your own permissions on that. The, the problem right now with dev tempfs, though, is when, we, when system D would mount it in a container, then all of a sudden we've got uh, but, but, the container and the host simultaneously grabbing the console. Yeah. And don't crashing the X server because... So don't do that. You can pick and choose what you want. You don't, if you just copy, bind mount, overlay, I mean, you don't have to use, you can mirror it. I mean, the we dev, are, the okay, dev namespace is not meant for doing what you're trying to do. Agreed, but we, but we, we have, but system D is doing it. It's not us. Yeah. Yeah, it, now we've got to make it appear, appear in the container if it's something that belongs to the container. Um, or we've got to go create a mouse. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, the... the Okay, so the example that you gave was the serial devices that you want to use? Okay. Oh. Okay. The example you used was a serial device that you want to use. So uh, what I, I'm, I'm wondering about how you start up your container and now you want this, the serial console to be passed into the container. We have this LXE device program that will do the MKNO and pass it in. Does that suffice or do you need it? Okay, in what case does it not suffice for is what I'm wondering. So the other case is that right now in where, where your, your auto dev stuff populates a certain set of uh, devices and creates certain um, mounts for the pseudo TTYs. There's a few other devices we m might want to set up in there. And it's, it's, it's uh, I think the, the UDEV kind of thing where we can pass messages in is a long-term solution to that, but right now we've got shorter-term solutions of trying to get a few more devices that the um, containers that have the static file systems can solve. <clears throat> oh, I think, I, I think uh, it would actually, in m many cases, it would need to be in the host system because you don't want the container making changes to something that you don't want it that could impact things outside of the container. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. You know, that's one of the that's one of the open issues. So that's one area that we're we're short on. Um, I think one of the other areas is we need to figure out some way to get LXC to figure out automatically that system D is going to be running in the darn thing so that we can... <laughs> I don't need to write the whole text. Well, you uh, yeah, yes. Let's do it this way. Um.
may I say something? Um, so okay. you, you know, you know that the device nodes are really not your problem. Uh, a device in, the, in in Linux is way more than simply a device <coughs> node. It's something that you have something in slash sys. It's something that Libutif then can uh, um, uh, pick up. Actually, there are quite a few devices that only exist in slash sys and have API there that are not a device node, right? So yeah. currently, the kernel doesn't virtualize that, right? SysFS is not virtualized, with the exception of network devices. Everything else is just in SysFS, and you see it in the, if you mount it in the container the same way as you see it in the host, right? And you can discuss as much and blame, put as much blame on systemly as you wish. If you just what? create device nodes in the, in the container, this will not solve anything because the API of Linux is not the device nodes. The API of Linux is that the, you, My big you problem with System D them. is I they created totally a magic you, cookie really that, that broke things. things. You think that device nodes is everything, but it's bullshit. Like, with just fix the, the kernel things, and then, then you can think about fixing user space and making things work, like yeah. making UDIF work in a container. But it's the wrong way around blaming systemd and thinking that you want to have <coughs> some kind of uh, user space okay. work around about the fact that SysFS is okay, the right now, virtualized. Okay, right now, okay, oh, it could have been designed a little better, that's all. I understand the need, You know, yeah, but, the kernel right. could okay. be designed okay. a bit better. You know, that's okay. a feature that is not supported by the kernel, and you cannot blame systemd for the fact that it doesn't okay. add in what the kernel doesn't provide. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, you guys are 15 minutes late, because the device namespace talk was about virtualizing SysFS and stuff. So the question is whether we need that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, well, you know, th these are sets of problems that are that are interfering. You know, yeah. I'm just looking for a solution. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, right, right now we're getting it. We're we're in a state where it'll run and it behaves for the the majority of use cases. And I've got a few of these corner cases that I'd like to see addressed. As far as the ortho, some of the other issues right now beyond the 0 0.9 uh, LXC. Uh, I'm working on the Fedora template, and I uh, appreciate the, the, the remarks about the, the steps toward moving toward LXC 1.0. And one of the big things is cleaning up those templates. Right now, and this is really kind of the, the uh, Fedora thing, right now the, the LXC-template, uh, te or LXC-Fedora template that I have will run on every distro. It hasn't been checked into Git yet. The problem is that making these templates work is requiring that the template owners create these things so that they will run on any distro. The old <coughs> uh, LXC Fedora template would only run on a system that had YUM and RPM. Well, that's fine. Actually, uh, Debian and Ubuntu and Fedora seem to cooperate pretty good. But you try running that template on Arc Linux or OpenSUSE, OpenSUSE actually has YUM and RPM, and it still doesn't work. So the template that I'm working on right now is distro agnostic. The code that runs in the host only requires distro agnostic tools. It's very difficult to do, but I did manage it for Fedora. The OpenSUSE guys, if I try and create an OpenSUSE container on Fedora, the first thing that happens is it says, oh, Zipper's not there. Well, I, we don't have Zipper. Uh, and the same thing's happening with the Arc Linux, Linux um, template. The templates have to run on the different distri distributions, and the only way to do that effectively is to purely use distro agnostic tools in the host system to create your runtime environment into which you can use your specific tools. And that's going to take work from all the template owners. Yeah, it's definitely a goal that we have for 1.0. Uh, well, it, it's not really a release goal at this point, but it's something that it would be really great if we could actually achieve that uh, in, in some ways. 
Uh, I noticed the Ubuntu Cloud template is already there, but the others are a long way from that. Uh, Fedora is good in the one that you have now, and uh, look forward to getting that in Git. Um, did you have anything else? Because we're huh? out of t Did you have anything else? Uh, 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 that's or? basically my, my two burning issues, so. Cool. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um,